Hey, everybody. Good afternoon. So, yeah, this is later than I usually do it, only because I had a lot of things going on this weekend. And so I figure instead of taking Sunday off, I would just do it later. But, um, no, I went to an annual barbecue and it was lots of fun. And I was taking my formula because people kind of know about the jelly juice in a lot of my different circles. But I haven't given people like the full lowdown. So when I went back to this annual party, I was able to give people, hey, good morning or good afternoon, Esmeralda. I was giving people the, the, the lowdown to the Jilly Juice protocol. And I made a few corrections, but this is the actual Jilly Juice. And then this is the formula to Jilly Juice. And then the life and the death formula is right there. So... Yep, nice weather is over here in Ohio too. So anyways, so this is the formula here. And if you look at how I wrote it out, jelly juice is basically water and salt dissolved. So it's Na and that plus means it's that is a positive, um, has a positive charge. And then AQ is aqueous plus then uh, chloride, so sodium chloride, and it's both, so the AQ says that both of them are, are um, dissolved, okay? And then you plus, then the, this is the chemical composition for lactic acid. So plus C3H603 over the macro and micronutrition of cabbage and kale, okay? And that encompasses all the proteins and the enzymes and everything that builds up the cells for cell regeneration. And so what life is, is a strong body. And that's basically the pain, productivity, and energy all proportional to each other. And you'll have maybe more pain and product than, than productivity if you do have to adapt to a surrounding that's upsetting your homeostasis. And of course, that creates energy. So all of these are proportional to each other. So pain, productivity, and energy are all proportional to each other based upon your environment. So that's what life is on a strong body. Then I do what life is. Here we go. And this is life, life. Okay. Let's see. So what this sign right here means if and only if. And this is the human body to the power of viruses. Okay. Plus actually human body to the power of viruses plus jelly juice to the infinite power. So this infinite power is actually going after the jelly juice as well as the human bodies with infinite viruses or with to the power of viruses. And that's directly proportional to pain, productivity, and energy. So what you do here, okay, with human body plus virus, with all the viruses, plus the J juice infinitely, you will have, it be directly proportional to pain, productivity, and energy. So that equals life. And that's always going to be interchangeable. Productivity before pain, pain before productivity, it just depends on what's going on. If you ever get to a point where you have a major upset of homeostasis. And then on a weak body, death or equals a weak body. I don't know if you can see it, but okay. So weak body equals, okay. This is where you're utilizing the antibiotic and probiotic method, which are basically relatively equal. And that's directly proportional to pain, productivity, and energy. So let me put the directly proportional. There's a sign. Looks like a, like a half fish. This sign right here means, right there, it means proportional. So now I'm going here and saying the antibiotic and probiotic method, when you're utilizing the, both of these methods, when you're saying, I'm using probiotics on my issue, or I'm using antibiotics on my issue, is because you're trying to stop the pain process. You're trying to eliminate pain. So then you're going down a death trajectory. That's death and a weak body. So when you're taking things to eliminate pain or you're taking probiotics to do a specific purpose to manipulate the symptoms in your body to then stop you having symptoms. So really the antibiotic and probiotic method is about intention. Okay. So these are actually propaganda, propaganda words. These are words that are based upon intention. So they're neither good nor bad. It's just how you're using them and why and why they're called antibiotics and probiotics is because they're telling you that there's a lot of footnotes. And if you don't understand the footnotes or the backstories behind, ambi behind antibiotics and probiotics, then you're going to apply your own meaning to it. And then 
that's why you have to understand what ambiotics are. It's when the purpose is to stop the healing process, to stop the pain process, or to manipulate parts of your body using probiotics, only probiotics. So that's directly proportional to the pain, productivity, and energy. Okay, so what is death? Death is if and only if, this is what this little arrow back and forth, these are like signs that you get from logic and all the different um, math and logic and all the different symbols, statistics and all that. And so the human body, HB, plus viruses to the infinite power, because you'll never, ever get away from viruses, plus then and antibiotics that are direct that are basically equal to probiotics that's directly proportional to pain productivity and energy so that's all directly proportional equals death what the difference is is that you're utilizing the antibiotic probiotic method instead of using jelly juice because jelly juice is all electrolytes and lactic acid which are keep each other balanced okay and then you have the macro micronutrition the cabbage and kale that obviously your body needs. It has all the vitamins and minerals, okay? So if you're utilizing jelly juice and you're inducing pain, you're going to actually heal. At some point, you're never going to have to feel that pain ever again because you finally healed your body. But when you're doing the antibiotic, probiotic method, where you're like, oh, I'm going to take probiotics, or oh, I'm going to take antibiotics. And I was explaining this to people at the party. I was picking and choosing people that haven't really been exposed to this. So this is like a perfect like speech cheat sheet that I was using. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna practice on. Some people have had the patience to hear this. Others, I could tell they weren't. So I was like letting it really go really short. But, you know, once I learn how to speak about this, then that's how I'm gonna basically introduce the Jelly Juice protocol. And then I'll have the elemental composition to the human body to show how this formula here is very closely related to the elemental composition to the human body. So, and then when I explain what the rules of life are and then what the rules of death, then people can see, okay, the outcome is based upon the intention, even if it's not, you know, a conscious intention. If you're applying the antibiotic probiotic method, you're going, your intention really is not to heal at the cellular level. It's healing at the superficial level. If there's even like a word for that, that really makes sense. Okay. So there's two laws applied, life or death. And if you apply the laws of death, then you're going to be just superficially dealing with your symptoms, trying to disappear them, which is basically the model of the Hippocratic Oath is do no harm because they think that pain is harm. But that's in the allopathic holistic because humans have not been able to be strong enough to withstand pain. So they're always trying to do things to anesthetize themselves. So when you are taking things to deal with pain, you're trying to well it's a different type of adaptation it's adapting until you die okay so what we're introducing as far as j juice is adapting indefinitely not adapting till you die because that's the model out there when people have a belief system that everyone should die you're going to die at some point okay well i can't get that mentality out of people's heads sometimes so there's nothing really i can say i can give them all of the science and everything that would create a continuous life but if you're resolute in your belief system that you should die, then there's nothing that anybody can tell you. So that's fine. But there is a formula to life. And the formula to life out there has to also be aligned to the elemental composition to the human body. So this is why. Ooh, of course, I had to go at the bottom. Hold on. So this is why. Along with that formula, this has to be brought into play. So people see, okay, the human body, 62% water, 16% protein. And then, you know, all the, uh, the elemental composition is like the first nine elements is really electrolytes and oxygen and water. And then the other like last 20 or 30 is your trace minerals. And then you have minerals, 6%, 16% fat, 16% protein, 62% water. And then you look at the jelly juice and of course the actual diet too. And the jelly juice houses all of the electrolytes that houses all the lactic acid too. So that's what you also get is lactic acid. That's right. So 75 at the bottom, which is not really in the actual diagram, 75 to 85% good bacteria. Well, it's not really necessarily good bacteria. There's no good bacteria or bad bacteria. What makes things good and bad is how it impacts your body. 
So not everybody's going to get a good and bad type of outcome when it comes to what they're being exposed to, even, even bacteria, any bacteria. Because on a strong body, bacteria will strengthen it. On a weak body, it'll decimate weak bodies or upset their homeostasis to where they feel symptoms. So good and bad is all relative to the state that your body is in. So if your body's in a weak state, then everything is going to be pathogenic. Everything is going to be antibiotic. Everything is going to be pollutant. Everything is going to be something of a pejorative negative nature because that's how your body is. It can't handle its environment. So you're going to then discriminate and call things pathogenic. So, um, so really on a strong body, you're supposed to have uh, a lot of, actually there's like more bacteria than there actually is human cells. And so last night I said something, you know, it was, we were talking about in a group about aliens and everything and how alien, what, what are aliens? And I'm saying the aliens are the viruses. They're the ones that will invade a body and then take control of it. And that's totally true. And they're like, no, it's like a person, there's people walking around. Well, viruses will take control of a body and then relative to how strong you are, the viruses can take over and actually manipulate and cause people to act way out of character. Like when people get dementia or when people get some kind of mental illness, it's like the viruses have taken over and have caused anomalies in all the different messages to all the different systems. So now you're not really there in your body. It's like something else has taken over, like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. That's the aliens in your body. It's the viruses that have basically dominated your programming. And so now you have a stranger type of person in your body when really it isn't. It's just the viruses and the bacteria that you didn't figure out how to live symbiotically with and they've taken over. So yeah, because what it is, is these viruses will then be able to make sure that all the different systems keep the body going for as long as it can before then the viruses take over the body and shut down organs. And then they go inhabit another host that's weak. And that's how cancer spreads. That's how weakness spreads. That's how fear spreads. It finds the kindred spirits and it capitalizes on the weaknesses. And that's what cancer is, is, is viruses capitalizing on weaknesses in the body. So what Jilly Juice is trying to do for you guys is basically strengthen your body so you can live symbiotically with all the viruses, the bacteria, and the funguses. So you don't become taken over and be possessed by these forces that you can't control. There's no way you can live in a bubble. Anyone that tries to live in a bubble will not survive and adapt to Earth's environment and atmosphere. Okay? So... So really what I'm going to have to do at some point is create like a big, huge, like poster board of this information. Once I get this, uh, like if I get other scientists out there that will go in and, and agree with me and understand this and say, okay, I, I see what you're doing here. This makes sense. This follows all the mathematical rules as well as science. Then I will have this like in print somewhere. And then I will have this along with it so people understand that this chemical composition is very closely related to this jelly juice and then what life and death is and they'll see why the jelly juice is the answer it will i won't have to sell anybody on it if they actually take the time to understand the chemical processes if they if they take the time to understand chemistry and they're willing to do a little extra legwork so that way they can see for themselves proving my theories but in different contexts Okay, because obviously you're not going to see what I've put together in academia, or they would have done it already. We wouldn't have biotech. We would just have jelly juice or cabbage water and salt, and then we wouldn't have reproduction, and we wouldn't have people aging or dying. It would just be a very, very even, even universe and, and uh, balanced uh, people and earth. Because the whole thing with the Georgia Guidestones is, is to try to live in perpetual balance with Earth, guiding reproduction wisely, and then taking <laughs> 7 billion down to 500 million. Well, that's going to be based upon how people apply the laws, how people apply these laws. Okay. So today was pretty interesting in the last couple of days introducing this to different people because this has been my research for the last like three to six months. This has been new since the book that I've written. And I've also changed my stance on certain things around vaccines. Okay, because you'll never ever get away from viruses, but you have to find a way to transition 
when Earth decides to send off a new message, such as like the Ebola virus. So that's like a new message from Earth. Okay. And it'll, I don't know how it's going to affect a strong body because there's so many other viruses and other factors that would contribute to somebody's um, getting to the next level of human consciousness. So, but on a weak body, you can tell how these viruses impact because they're specific characteristics such as um, hemorrhagic bleeding type of thing, which is characteristic of, of the Ebola virus. So I can't figure out why it is that, that the Ebola virus will target specific organs in the body, but I'm thinking with your 11 different systems and specific organs, maybe Earth upgrades specific things. So these viruses are upgrading, if you're on a strong body, will upgrade my circulatory system, my lymphatic system. Okay, so that's probably why on a weak body, it caused people to bleed out of all different orifices because the body can't handle that message. And it's supposed to be upgrading your body, but you can't handle it. You haven't upgraded your device to handle it, so you won't be able to take part in the upgrade. But that's why I'm not worried about Ebola or any other viruses out there because it's just going to make me stronger all the bacteria, everything, all the minerals that I'm exposed to because I'm bringing in the balance that's been missing. Okay, that's why I'm not worried about Monsanto or GMO and even some of the drugs out there. Okay, when you think about it, when your body is so well balanced, let's say you take, a, let's say you take something that has a, a excess minerals in it or excess antigen. Well, on a very well balanced body, your body is going to purge out what it doesn't need. Sometimes it purges out right away. Sometimes it may take a couple days for your body to process those elements that you get. But let's say you happen to get like a conglomeration of excess elements that your body's like, okay, there's too much for me to handle. So I'm going to need to get rid of it. Well, as long as your body, because I mean, when somebody gets sick indefinitely and they have just, they start just freaking out and getting sick and all that, they're not able to release the excess to then bring them back to then center to bring everything back into equilibrium. So this is at some point down the road when you guys do get exposed to things that are like overabundant, you might go into upset of homeostasis relative to how strong those antigens are, but your body will then react to the way it's supposed to, to then get your body back to adaptability. And then you can still process the message from those antigens, from those viruses or bacteria, or excess elements, okay? And then it was like, it would be like you've never been exposed to anything egregious at all once you let your, once your body takes over and takes care of anything excess. So that's what J-Juice does, is it takes what's already in excess in your body. And since you're harboring it, and then it's causing anomalies, causing the aging process, causing cancer disease and chronic illness, causing weaknesses in all of your tendons, your muscles, your veins, all that stuff. So JJ sends says, okay, you're now going to have to release the excess stuff that's causing those anomalous messages. You're going to have to go through pain, but it's only going to be short term or, I mean, whatever short term is, it's all relative to how sick you are. And then eventually once we repair the damage, okay, that's what these, that's what Jilly just does, repairs the damage, then you'll never have to deal with that situation again. And you'll never let yourself go to that point to where you have to go and, and revisit that issue. That weakness has now been completely eradicated. And it happens, what well, just happens in layers. You're not going to be like reversing all of your issues all at once and be like 100% perfect in the next like three months. I'm on my third year, 45 years old on my third year, reversed most, if not all of the issues that I know of. And there are new ones that are coming up that I'm not aware of because the body has things that go on in there that are set to trigger when all the conditions are right. So it did, what does Jeju's do? It goes and figures out what those weaknesses are before they trigger and then they trigger and then you're like oh this is something new oh this is something a little different and or you will react to stimulus a bit different so maybe be prior to the j juice when your biochemistry is one way and you get stimulus that comes in you'll have a very different reaction to the stimulus okay so that's also something to expect when you're on j juice is you're going to see a different reaction to stimulus out there because your biochemistry is different so then you have to figure out, okay, when you don't react the same way to certain things that are out there, you can be like, oh, wow, it's a totally new world. That's what the, that's how worlds change is when you change the hormones and change all the biochemistry. And so when things come at you that used to be filtered through a specific biochemistry, and now you've changed your biochemistry, your experience and the way you think about it, your experiences are going to be totally different. The way you react, the way you respond, the way you deal with, you know, 
problem situations, the way you even strategize your goals, whether short term or long term. Okay. And then you're going to realize you're not going to be in a hurry because you're not on this time schedule of, oh my God, I'm going to die in the next 20 years. Hey, Steve White, you know, you're going to actually take things very chill because you know you have plenty of time because you'll go through the healing process. It's going to take, you know, a few years for you to sell, for your body to finally get back to where it needs to be to where then your healing process becomes easier and easier. But in the beginning, your healing process is going to be a bitch. If you, if you can't get through the first three or four months where you have a set schedule of drinking the J juice, getting the waterfalls, which is basically autophagy. Okay, autophagy is when your body is uh, purging out and disassembling mutated cells to allow the new cells to regrow. If you can't get through the first three or four months where you're doing a continuous at least twice or three times a week, the purging and, and dealing with the healing, then it's gonna be very difficult for you to return to this if you wanna put this off for like the next five or six years because every single year that you don't do the J juice, your body is degrading. You already see evidence of that in your family and friends, your parents, you know, everyone that's older than you, you're already seeing what happens when you don't bring the things that your body needs to then regenerate. You're seeing the, the progressive degradation, the death of that human body, the death of your cells, the death of humanity, but then that's why we have reproduction to make sure we don't go extinct. But what happens if we don't have to extinct ourselves and extinct ourself and we become the best copy and then we're able to adapt and go and grow stronger in our environment on a continuous indefinite basis and so but you have to understand how the pain process works that's one of the, the biggest things is understanding pain not being afraid of the salt because those that are afraid of like oh i have high blood pressure because we were all doing our blood pressure because we have a nurse in the group and she's taking all of our blood pressure and I'm 124 over 75. That's normal. Some were like 230 over 100, and that's pretty high. So we had to chill out. And then they retook it, and he, was, he you know, his blood pressure lowered. But there was a various, you know, um, stages of, of people's blood pressure. Some were higher, like 147. That's pretty high. 147 is pretty high. So. I mean, I used to be really low blood pressure, okay? But when you have high blood pressure, you have anomalies and mutations in your circulatory system, in all of your systems, and it's impacting the, the system that handles the blood pressure. And so when salt is brought into the picture, regardless, let's say prior to the J-juice, salt is an energizing force. It's a conductor. So when you bring salt, which that's why they have like sodium fluoride, sodium this, sodium that. Sodium energizes whatever it's being paired with. So if you're putting salt on your food and you already have high blood pressure and you already have issues with your circulatory system, then yeah, salt's going to energize your mutations and you're going to experience high blood pressure. Not because the salt did it, you already have the mutations because salt is not poisonous. It's just an energizing force. But on a person who has low blood pressure like me, I would never ever get high blood pressure even on the J juice as a healing symptom because I never dealt with high blood pressure prior to the J juice. So that's why, you know, I mean, they, they say, oh, yes, yeah, salt causes high blood pressure and strokes and heart attacks. But they say it as if everybody, because they can't figure out who doesn't have high blood pressure. So they say if you just lower your salt intake across the board, that's how public health works is they don't look at each individual case and say, okay, well, you can have this much, you can have this much. They say that there's a minimum, but there's no maximum. They say there's a minimum. And some will say, oh yeah, there's a maximum, but not really. There isn't really, it's just how they word it. So, because they know, I mean, you see salt in aisles, okay? Salt doesn't cause dehydration unless you're shoving salt down somebody's throat. And that's where a lot of people out there have a misunderstanding around the J juice is because they always think of it as just salt and that's it or salt and water and that's it. But no, there is an actual chemical process that brings in lactic acid, electrolytes, and then micro and macronutrition. And so, you know, J juice is not just salt. It is a chemical process. But those are the same types that will go and demonize fluoride, go and demonize, you know, Monsanto, or go demonize mercury, like in the vaccines because they don't realize that all of those, those minerals, those elements is what the body needs. And then on a very well-balanced system, it'll excrete and purge out any excess minerals, and then your body will absorb what it needs. 
and it will keep it balanced. So as long as you give your body what it needs, and it needs a certain amount of bacteria, okay, which is in the, the fermentation, but it has to be the right fermentation. It can't be alcohol. It can't be kombuchas or apple cider vinegars or any of those fermented fruits because the fruit sugars, when you already have a candida imbalance, with candida, it's yeast overfed by sugars and sugar substitutes. So when you already have a fungus, a fungus issue that's out of control, feeding your body massive amounts of sugar would only just then get your candida way out of whack and cause you to lower your immune system. So it lowers your defenses. And then the viruses that you're exposed to, no matter what, are always going to then are going to then take over. And that's where cancer comes from is because you don't have the defenses to live symbiotically with the viruses because you haven't brought in the right balance. So Jilly Juice is the right probiotic. It's the right micro macronutrition, it's the right elements, um, and you need trace minerals. So that's why I'm not afraid of tap water either. Before, yes, I was in the fear game with the holistic world where I was afraid of tap water, I was afraid of the chemtrails, I, was af I wasn't afraid of 5G, but when you're afraid of Teflon, you're afraid of all your aluminum, people are like, oh, we can't use aluminum because you're gonna get mercury or aluminum poisoning. I'm like, no. When you finally bring in the right elements to be able to, that's aligned with your biochemistry, it will allow your body to release any excess that you've been exposed to through either something that you intended to do or through no fault of your own, and then your body will absorb what it needs. So you have a filtration system. So you understand what mucus is. You know, when you blow your nose, it's extra minerals and extra things that your body doesn't need that you have to release. Don't dry up the mucus. Don't try to like take medicine to dry up the mucus. I mean, the anti-inflammatories stop the, the the healing process. People take anti-inflammatories, you know, painkillers, which I understand when people are in pain, they don't want to be tortured. However, you know, that is the body trying to heal, but you're not giving it what it needs. And so when people are in chronic pain, the body is chronically not being given what it needs. So it's chronically trying to heal until it finally, until you finally just allow your body to shut down because you're not giving it what it needs. Your heart and your, and your major organs, your brain needs to have specific elements to work and it'll it'll try to uh, you know compensate just a little bit but not not too long not too long will it try to compensate so yeah i did see those those angry faces i still see you angry face i know because you don't understand the jilly juice so as i'm saying you guys that are that are coming on my page they're new I got a lot of trolls because they don't understand the chemical process. They live in fear. And when you live in fear, you're going to think that everything is poisonous because you don't understand how chemistry works. And this is some dude that has Chinese writing by, oh, he's like a troll. He's like one of those uh, gamers. I got a lot of followers. I got a lot of followers. And so, um, but yeah, when you deal with ignorance out there, they're gonna they're gonna project their ignorance and their fear, and they're gonna fill in the blanks of their own perception if they don't understand something because they're not taking the time to actually read my book or listen to my videos to then also do their own research. So what happens is what people do is when they don't want to believe something or don't want to do their research, they'll automatically just fill in the blanks instead of taking the time but I mean that's what we all do if we don't know something that's just the natural way people and people read and take information and based upon how well balanced or how imbalanced they are will be relative to how easily they'll grasp this information or how difficult sometimes you just can't reach people so anyways um so yeah so the formula to life and death you know the formula to life to life is basically taking in an element that will continuously regenerate and then your pain, productivity, and your energy will directly be proportional to each other based upon uh, your environment and then the elements that you're taking in. But then when you're on a death trajectory, when you're taking the antibiotic method and the probiotic method, which has an intention to stop the healing process, that is then the pain, productivity, and energy will be directly proportional based upon the intention of the antibiotics and the probiotics, okay? Because what you're trying to do now is you're trying to then create alternative pathways by forcing your body to take a different turn. Not the way it's supposed to go, but you're forcing your body to take different turns because you haven't given your body what it needs. So it has to find alternative ways. Or you're taking something to completely stop the programming. So anti-inflammatories. Inflammation is your body creating white blood cells to go after and then heal the body. And then the prostaglandin hormone 
releases a specific hormone that helps with the healing process, but the sensation of pain is part of that prostaglandin hormone. So when you take an anti-inflammatory or a painkiller, you're stopping the healing process. Okay? So you're stopping the healing process, and then there this is why people then degrade progressively in our society, because you're applying the death programming, which is the antibiotic probiotic method. Okay, so when you stop using that method and you actually take um, not just probiotic, but Julie juice, which is electrolytes, probiotics, or lacto lactic acid from lactobacillus, and then the micro and macronutrition, and then there's a very specific diet, which is talks about the antibiotics, like the spices and the spicy peppers and all of the your extracts and all of that, and lemons and limes, and the, don't cook your fruit, stay away from legumes. Um, and you could have chicken and eggs and fruits and vegetables, but don't cook your fruit, you know, raw seeds, raw nuts and good oils. But uh, be careful of the, of the spices because that's too many um, spicy stuff. And you and I call them antibiotics because people use them in the holistic world to stop the programming, to stop the pain. Because you're using turmeric and honey and um, garlic and colloidal silver and all these anti biotics, but like they're in the natural, like dandelion root, milk thistle, they're using all these detoxes. And what it does, it further degrades the body and stops the program of the body. And it immediately, it like, um, it kills everything in sight because that's what antibiotics do is it kills everything and it stops the programming. You need a certain amount, which at what, what makes up antibiotics, which basically is trace minerals. Okay. But they're in such a condensed form that they, when it's in a, such a condensed form, it's so strong that it kills stuff. In trace amounts, it's fine. But when you condense so much mercury or condense so much radiation, when you condense so much turmeric or so much garlic or so much of peppermint, it then becomes poison to the body because then it completely overwhelms and takes over and then kills. Okay? So you don't want to be doing that. So that's why I, I highlight specific things on the diet. You want it to be a bland diet so that way your body can be able to repair and heal without you without it fighting against you bringing in elements that are going to make it undermine the process and then you bring in j juice and get the waterfalls which is where you drink a, a lot of the juice in a short amount of time you drink water and you'll see stuff come out of your ass some of you might throw up because you have that propensity because you have issues that are in your belly like your upper digestive tract that needs to release stuff and then also lower digestive tract in your colon and you may have parasites in there, you may have fungus in there, excess fungus, you have excess bacteria, excess programming, because when you have, when you test positive on a titer test, you'll have so many antibodies, like so many antibodies swirling around in your body. And that shows the government that you have some layer of protection. So you can go to school or do some kind of job thing, but it also could then trigger cancer disease and chronic illness. So when someone is HIV positive, it means they're not in danger of dying from the AIDS virus, but if they allow their body to degrade, then AIDS becomes the issue from the HIV antibody, okay? So there's a point, there's a balance to where the antibodies will give you some kind of layer of protection to adapt to your environment, but you let those antibodies become too much, that's when it takes over the programming of your body and then you cause, then you trigger cancer disease and chronic illness. But then you get no antibodies at all and you and then you get, let's say you have, you've never been exposed to Ebola, and you and you don't and you have a very weak body, your body's going to go into a major upset of homeostasis. So on a strong body, the Ebola virus will probably won't have any issues. Probably won't even know you're exposed to Ebola because your body won't react. But on a weak body, any exposure to viruses, no matter what, you're going to react. So when you get a vaccine and you get like a live attenuated, so it's a weakened version of the virus of the Ebola, and you have a weak body, yeah, you're going to get some kind of reaction. And then this is what's this is what then triggers the anti-vax community where people that were kids are vaccine injured because they already have a very weak body the doctor didn't do any kind of prior testing and so they get the vaccine and their body can't handle it and they go into some kind of like you know triggering some cancer disease and chronic illness and they see it's a direct result from the vaccine well that vaccine and another person on a strong body didn't give them that reaction but it's the individual what they bring to the table is what causes these reactions okay so but then but here's the thing it's like if you have a weak body and you can't adapt your environment, you're going to have to get the vaccine and risk and play and roll the dice because you're rolling the dice anyways, being in the, in the environment out here where the aggressive virus is, you're going to be catching it at some point or you go get a vaccine, get that layer of protection. 
least a little bit, and at least helps you transition and adapt and assimilate to then the new current conditions, which is that new virus that's out there. And that's one of the things that I had a hard time in the beginning when I was anti-vax, and then I realized I get it now. Because no matter what, you're always gonna be exposed to viruses. You don't always test positive for all the viruses, but you have the data. But now when you start testing positive for all these different viruses, then you're like, okay, well, yeah, okay, you're proving to the government that you're protected, but at some point having too many antibodies of these viruses will then trigger the autoimmunity and other types of diseases, okay? So there is a balance, and jelly juice is a balance. The whole biochemistry, the body, mind, and spirit is all a balance, okay? I mean, before I was talking about like the hormones and the candida and something else, but having an imbalance of hormones, but see, really, it really, it comes down to is um, bringing in the right elements and applying, you know, the jelly juice, which is electrolytes and macro micronutrition and lacto, lactic acid. Okay. And that will then induce the pain sequence to then have you heal. So, yeah. So the death trajectory is when you're applying the antibiotic method and the probiotic method. So when you're taking just probiotics, guess what? I was out today or I was out last night hanging out with people like in the middle where all these trees are. I have not been bit by one single mosquito. Didn't have to use any mosquito repellent or gnat repellent or anything. Not one bite. And I had, you know, and I, I have my face and I my you know, I was I was wearing jeans, yes, but nothing i wasn't getting bit by nothing on my face i mean i was out there this afternoon and there's mosquitoes and gnats and everything and nothing was biting me okay usually i have at least one bite per year nothing and i've been outside i was out last night and this morning hanging out a bunch around a bunch of trees around a bunch of grass you know in a different area where there's a lot more you know foliage and no bugs were messing with me because guess what when you have too much lactic acid in your body, that then too much lactic acid causes rigor mortis. However, it also attracts pestilence. So then we figured out that mosquitoes carry disease. Yes, they look for people who are on a death trajectory and they want to finish them off. So this is why ticks and all pestilence, anything that bites you that's a flea or a tick or a mosquito, they're uploading programming to finish off anything that's on a death trajectory. So that's why you have these new diseases of like, you know, Japanese encephalitis, malaria, Lyme disease, because you have an imbalance. So lactic acid imbalance is like a chemical that gets released by something that's imbalanced and that attracts then the scavengers, the pestilence, and then upload some crazy data that your body can't handle. And I'm thinking, well, what happens if a mosquito bites me and uploads that data? Will it affect me? Well, I haven't been by mosquitoes, so mosquitoes aren't attracted to me. So I'm thinking these mosquitoes are like the, the, the messengers of death, okay? And they're looking and seeking and destroying. They're seeking and destroying anything that, that is weak, okay? So if your animal has so much like gnats, you know, around it or getting ticks and fleas and, and, it, and pestilence is attracted to it, it's because it's on a death trajectory. Has, has imbalances, lactic acid imbalances, candida imbalances, all these things. And so I found with my dog, no ticks, no fleas, no anything. She goes outside, no, bugs don't really, they don't, they're not really, they're not congregating around her. She doesn't have gnats flying around her at all when she's outside. So that's a strong indicator of how your biochemistry is, is what pestilence is attracted to you. So I remember last year, I think I had one mosquito bite, one or two. The year before I had a few more than that, okay? Cause I was just starting the jelly juice, but this year, none, none. So that right there, if you guys wanna know how you are as far as your biochemistry, go outside with no mosquito repellent and see if pestilence is attracted to you. And if you get bit, then you know, you got some imbalances going on. Get on the J juice, hit it harder. Okay, there are indicators to tell you where you're at as far as your biochemistry. All right. All right, well, anyways, I'm gonna go do my thing. I got things to do, but I wanted to just kind of touch base with you guys since I didn't touch base with you earlier. 
and you guys just have a great day and thanks for listening. Okay. All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye.